Hello everybody. May you be blessed in Jesus name wherever you are. May the Lord Almighty guide and protect you in Jesus name. Our topic today is the battle is for your future. The battle is for your future. Genesis chapter 37 verse 5 to 8. If you could see where God is taking you You would understand the reason for the great warfare and adversity you are facing. You are pregnant with destiny and Satan knows it. That's the summary of the scripture we just read now. And Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it his brethren and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, "Here I pray you, this dream which I have dreamt For behold we are binding shelves in the field and lo my shelf arose and also stood upright and behold your shelf stood round about and made absence to my shelf and his brethren said to him shall thou indeed reign over us or shall thou indeed have dominion over us and they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words Genesis 37:5 to 8 Joseph's brothers already hated him because he was the favorite son of their father. But once Joseph began to talk about his dreams, once he began to talk about his future, their hatred for him increased and they began to question him by asking him, "Shall you indeed reign over us? Shall you indeed have dominion over us?" Joseph's brothers were not too concerned about who he was as a 17-year-old dreamer. Their concern was over who he was going to become they were not afraid of his present they were afraid of his future and they wanted to stop him from becoming who god said he would become and going where god said he would go they wanted to stop him from entering into his destiny if there is anything satan desires to do today it is to keep you from entering into your destiny he wants to keep you from your future Satan does not care if you live in your past. It is not even your present that is Satan's greatest fear. It is your future. He does not want you to have what God said you will have. Do what God said you will do. Go where God said you will go and become who God said you will become. He wants to keep you from your destiny. He wants to stop you from all the good things in your life. He wants to keep you from your destiny. He wants to stop you from your future. Everything that the body of Christ is going through, everything that your family members are facing, everything that you as individual may be fighting is because of your destiny. The trials, the tests, the afflictions, and even the setbacks are not more than an attack from the enemy to keep you from possessing what God has promised you. Let's face the truth here. Satan has launched an all out attack against God's people. The attack that many people are under is the greatest attack they have ever experienced. But the good news is regardless of how severe the attack is, it will not work. Whatever weapon the enemy may have formed against you, it will not prosper. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment that shall condemn amen this is the heritage of the servants of the lord and their righteousness is of me says the lord isaiah 54:17 in fact what the enemy thought would destroy you is going to make you better what the enemy meant for evil against you will turn to your good Regardless of what you are going through, if you stay faithful, God will turn it around and good will come out of what looks bad. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Romans chapter 8 verse 28. The attack against you, your finances, your ministry, and even your family will not prosper and not only will it not prosper in the end it will backfire the word backfire it means to have a result opposite of what was expected this is exactly what is going to happen in your life 
the devil's plan is going to backfire and what the devil thought would destroy you is only going to make you stronger what the devil thought will make you lose lose faith is only going to make you have faith in fact what the devil thought would cause you to curse god is going to cause you to praise god hallelujah what the devil thought would be stumbling block is going to become a stepping stone your haters are going to become elevators that will lift you up to a higher place of blessings and glory look at what happened at the cross let me tell you the devil thought the cross would be the end for jesus but instead what looked like an end become a new beginning the cross could not hold him the grave could not keep him death could not handle him three days after he was crucified he arose from the grave conquering death and hell if satan would have known what was going to happen at the cross he would have never have crucified the lord his plans failed his attack did not prosper and in the end not only did his attack not prosper it backfired amen so child of god i want to give you these scriptures we continue first corinthians chapter 1 genesis 3 to 4 genesis 37 to 5 you have to read it as you are reading this and you remember that when you give your life to christ god marks you he said you are mine he put out crown of favor on your head that's all great but the challenge is you become a target to the enemy he knows you are destined to take new ground he knows god has favored you to leave your mark so he's going to work over time trying to stop you many times the enemy knows who, who we are even before we realize who we are when david was a teenager out walking in the shepherd's fields there was nothing unusual about him he didn't have a significant position taking care of his father's sheep he didn't come from wealth and influence they were a low-income family nothing about him stood out why did his father leave him in the fields if when the prophet came to anoint one of the sons as the next king was no big deal to bring him why did his father disrespect him and look down on him like that when david took lunch to his brothers when they were in the army why did his oldest brother make fun of him and belittle him why was he intimidated or why was he jealous david wasn't intimidated didn't look like he was any threat to them but the enemy can see things in you that you may not see in yourself david saw himself as ordinary but even the enemy knew he was a giant killer he knew he was a history maker that's why he came against david so strongly many of the difficulties you faced things that didn't make sense opposition that came out of nowhere people that turn on you is because there is a giant killer in you there is a history maker you may not be able to see it yet but even the enemy can see there is greatness in you have a new perspective those difficulties are assigned something amazing is in your future mark chapter 5 says there was a man that was possessed with evil spirits it had gotten so bad nobody could control him they tried chaining him up but he was so strong he would break the chains all through the night and day he will wander through the tombs wearing no clothes screening and cutting himself this man didn't look like he had a chance the range in his mind society has written him off but i can imagine some nights there there were moments of sanity where he will look up and say god please help me where am i so tormented god i want to go back home i can see his little boy being for him his wife weeping so discouraged it looked like that was his destiny people had given up on him but god never gives up on us nobody is too far gone don't write your child off don't write your neighbor off your cousin may look like they are too bad too addicted too depressed too far of course the enemy wouldn't be fighting them that hard 
if there wasn't something amazing on the inside of them. Jesus was in Galilee on the shore teaching the people. At the end of the day, instead of going back and rest, what he normally did, he told the disciples he wanted to cross to the other side of the lake to where the man was. In the middle of the night, while they were on the boat, a huge storm arose. The waves started crushing over the boat, filling it with water. Looked like it was going to sink. Jesus was asleep in the back and they ran to him. Practically, Jesus woke up. We are about to die. Jesus stood up and spoke to the storm. Peace be still. Suddenly, the winds and waves stopped. Everything was perfectly calm. The next morning, when they arrived at the shore, Jesus was getting out of the boat. The drenched man came running up to him, fell at his knees and started screaming. Jesus told these demons to come out and instantly the man, the man was healed. The scripture says in the book of Mark 15, they saw the man sitting fully clothed and his right mind was interesting. When Jesus was on the boat headed towards the, the man, that huge storm was not random, it wasn't just an act of nature, a coincidence. That was the enemy trying to stop Jesus from getting to this man. You would think the enemy would be satisfied. I mean, the man was possessed out of his mind, cutting himself. Surely he is not a threat. He will never do anything great. No. The enemy knew despite all he had done, despite the confusion, the curtain that this man still had greatness in him, that he still had a destiny to fulfill, dreams to accomplish. So, when he saw Jesus crossing the lake, he thought, I've got to stop him. I've got to keep him from getting to that man. There is a fight for your future. But what I want you to see is, it's not your battle. God is fighting for you. The enemy may send the storms. Opposition that seems too big. Don't worry, God controls the winds. He overrides every negative force. Those winds that are trying to keep you from your destiny, God is speaking to them right now. Breakthroughs are coming. Healing is coming. Freedom is coming. Things that look like they will never turn around. The storm seems darker than ever on your own. You don't have a chance. You are not on your own. Get ready. Favor is coming. Victory is coming. Like this man, you are going to see God override what is trying to stop you. There is no storm too strong that it can't come. No giant too big that it can't defeat. No fire too hot that he can't step in and bring you out. Amen? Yes, this man that was drenched, he didn't know that Jesus had spoken to the winds. He didn't know that there was a huge storm. Jesus had gone to great lengths to get to him. He just showed up on the chores. You don't know how many storms the enemy has sent to try to keep God from getting to you. How many times God has said, Peace be still. That's my son. That's my daughter. Break the chains. They are going to fulfill their purpose. God has been fighting for you your whole life. Pushing back the darkness. Coming storms. Crossing legs just to get to you. Some of these battles started when you were a small child. The enemy knew the, the, the back they you are back then who you were called to be he could see the favor and anointing on your life he could see you this destined for greatness so he walked over time trying to stop you from your destiny things that you had no control over amen so whatever you are doing the enemy can't stop your destiny he can't end your life david said in the book of psalm 30 god I praise you, for you refuse to let my enemies triumph over me. Why did that fire not take out his life? God refused to let the enemy triumph. Why did that accident do not hurt you? Why did God refuse to let him harm you? How did you beat the cancer? Why did that unhealthy childhood not stop you? How has that addition not finished you off? Because God's purpose is more powerful than the enemy's plan. The forces of darkness cannot stop what God has ordained for you. If you only knew all the things God refused to let them happen to you, you may have had some bad breaths, things that weren't fair, 
but just the fact that you are still here to a sign god's favor is on your life there may be obstacles trying to stop you now you can't understand why it's because of the greatness in you the enemy doesn't come against people that don't don't have anything if you weren't a threat he wouldn't be bothering you in one sense you can take it as a complaint as a compliment yes i have big obstacles but i know it's because i have a big future i have had some bad breaks some disappointments but it couldn't finish me off i'm still standing the enemy wouldn't have wasted so much time and energy on you if there wasn't something amazing in your future amen he knows your future is great now do you do your part start in faith don't go around complaining about what didn't work out what you didn't get god is still working he is god of justice he will make up for what was unfair he will pay you back for the wrongs that we are done amen this is why paul said in the book of corinthians a wide door of opportunity is open for me and there are many adversaries the enemy the enemy is adversaries not because god has forgotten about you god cannot forget you it's because of the wide doors that are about to open for you it's because of the favor that is in your future when you look back over your life you can see things that came against you some you had nothing to do with things that weren't fair you were left out you were disturbed in so many ways people before you people talk bad about you make to make you to look back make you to look bad other times you try to step up to a new level you try to set a new standard but opposition came out of the woodwork things that you've never faced there are forces that don't want you to take your your new ground and then when the enemy sees you start to make progress he will send the storm the winds the waves that's when god will step up and say peace be still know ye today that your future is so bright okay and know that the storm is a sign god is close to the shore you are about to see things in your favor amen and the lord almighty will grant you peace will give you favor that people will see and they glorify god i thank you very much may the good lord bless you and guide you in jesus mighty name amen